Hello and welcome to Color Theory from the Inside Out Part 2. You're not going to see my face today because I'm having some issues with editing and so I'm just going to try to shoot this from beginning to end, uh, no cuts, and hopefully it all works out. So um, I'd like to start today by saying thank you to two people who worked in their studio color notebook and sent me images from what they, some of the stuff they got up to this week. So the first person I want to say thank you to is Jackie Wolven. Um, and this is from her video on YouTube, How I Start a Painting. And um, this printout does not do uh, her colors justice. So I hope that you go see her video. Um, it's a really great video in a lot of ways, but it was so fun to watch her process of making these um, two different combinations. And she kind of talks through it. And I just, I loved every moment of listening to her thought process when she did that. And then the second person I want to say thank you to is Michelle Ziedman. Um, she's at michelle.ziedman on Instagram. And she's doing a 100 Days of Art on the Road challenge. And I actually met Michelle uh, a few years ago because we um, were both people who did a 100 Day uh, project um, and we both lived in Seattle, so there were a few of us that met up IRL and really hit it off. And uh, Michelle is a, uh, she's a fantastic artist. Um, and one thing that I was really impressed by one time when I've met her is she showed us her, um, her setup for, <laughs> for painting uh, on the road. And it is so cute and so um, efficient and it has everything she needs and I love it. So um, she uh, clearly um, did a great job of um, documenting which um, paints pigments she used and then some of her experiments and then she did a, a study of her, um, her view. So yay, it's just really fun to have a peek into y'all's worlds. And so thank you so much. That was really generous of you to share that. And um, if you uh, are watching this and you're like, oh, I would have done that, then you can do it too. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen the first video from this series, then give that a, give that a check out and um, try out doing a studio color notebook yourself. There's no wrong way to do it. It is really, really useful and also quite wonderful in every way. So, um, Without further ado, let's get started today. Um, I want to talk to you today about color wheels and primary colors. Now, um, there is, I, I don't want to say the word controversy, but there's a lot of discussion right now um, about how kids are being taught primary colors in grade school. And um, we are going to get deeper into historical context in the, in the future in this series. But specifically, we're going to be talking about primary colors um, based on uh, Johannes Itten's um, model. And I'm not going to go into this book right here, but his model is um, represented here in terms of where he has spaced things. So um, not, not just Itten, but other, other people before him had kind of landed on yellow, red, and blue as being primary colors, as in no other color could possibly mix to make these colors. And we have since learned that this is not actually true. And um, so the color wheel on the outside here is created by the CIE, otherwise known as the International Commission on Illumination, but they're actually a French group. So they're called Commission Internationale de, um, de Eclairage. Sorry about my French, <laughs> but they're the they're considered um, worldwide the best authority on light and lighting, and so they were able to do a hue spacing using um, cyan, magenta, and yellow on their color wheel. And um, if you've ever tried mixing a certain magenta and yellow, you really can make red. And if you mix um, cyan and magenta, you can make blue. So that pretty much you know, just dis disproved that. And so people are in some um, important conversation about uh, color literacy these days. And there's actually something called the color literacy 
project that's happening that just started in 2018. So we're like, we're right in the middle of history right now. Um, and um, they're gonna, they're doing a lot of work to educate, to make new educational, um, new educational models to share with people. And I'm super curious to know, like, will this affect Crayola crayons? Will we have cyan, magenta, yellow crayons? I don't know. Um, anyway, but this is color theory from the inside out. So um, before we get really deep into the history of how this all played out, I think it's really important for us to get our hands into the colors ourselves. So what I'd like to do today is um, I'd like to uh, invite you to try making a couple of color wheels, but not like, let's try to do cyan, magenta, yellow, which you totally you know, if you haven't done it before, give it a whirl. It's quite interesting and satisfying. But um, I would actually like to um, try um, and, and have you invite you to try um, doing a couple of color wheels that choose one um, like red of some sort. And this um, this is a pretty orangey situation, right? This isn't cyan and this is not like your fire truck red. So I just chose something from like the general red family. And I chose anthraquinone blue, which is this really deep green leaning blue. Um, and then for my uh, yellow world, I decided to do raw sienna, which is almost brown. And I chose these three kind of at random. I was just like, what would be potentially weird? Like I don't look at this and go, Oh, I can't wait to see these three together, but I thought I bet I will be surprised. So I'm going to try those three together and I have another interesting and potentially weird combination to show you after that. But what I'd like for you to do, if you don't already have your studio color notebook out, or if you don't have paper and paint or markers or crayons or whatever, if you don't have them out already, I would like to invite you to hit pause and just do some do some painting and coloring with me now. And if it is the middle of the night, like three o'clock in the morning and you're lying in bed watching this, which is totally something that I would do, um, then don't worry about that. You can um, just watch me paint and gently fall asleep and then we'll talk to you later. <laughs> so, okay, so we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this studio color notebook style. And what I mean by that is we're not gonna sweat it, okay? This is not school, all right? You get to do whatever you want, and I get to do whatever I want, and so I'm going to. And so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna use this piece of paper as a palette because I know I can stick it into my notebook later, and who knows what's gonna happen on this piece of paper. I could just start experimenting. You never, you don't know. I definitely don't know. I never know what's gonna happen when I pull out a studio color notebook page. All right, so um, hopefully this will be bright enough for you to be able to see. I almost wanna, if I got closer, would that help? Probably not. All right, so this is a, um, a printout, a printable that I just found online by carrielewis.com. And um, that was really cool of her because I'll tell you something, I really do not like drawing models for um, for color wheels because I never get this, <laughs> never get this circle, the concentric circles right. Um, and um, so, yeah, so thank you, Carrie Lewis. Um, alrighty, so we're going to do these primaries this red is a little bit it's so funny it looked so orange on the tube but if there's such thing as pinky orange I feel like that's what this is and I don't even know if I like it I don't I don't not like it I don't not like it okay so as I'm putting these down I'm realizing this is not so weird. This is not a weird combination in my opinion. You know, this feels actually rather basic. <laughs> but um, even so, let's put them all together and see what happens. So, um, all right, we're gonna start with these um, oranges, I think. So I'm gonna grab 
Um, so I know that ochre has a lower tinting strength than quinacridone red. So I'm not, I'm going to be careful when I add quinacridone red. Now, um, quinacridone red looks like, oh, this is very interesting. It looks kind of like, both of these seem sort of, do I want to say wimpy? I'm not really sure what word I want to use right now. This is just like a really interesting brownie orange. And because I'm just doing this on the fly, I don't even know if this is really halfway. Like if we were, okay, let's say we were in a college class right now. Oh my gosh, my professor would just be so like disgusted. <laughs> like I, um, you know, I would be a lot more careful if we weren't just sort of like messing around here on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? All right. So now I'm just gonna do this ochre with a touch of the red. Oh yeah, this is definitely not, this is definitely not. Uh, I need to make this one more red, don't I? Okay, fine, I will. Okay, but you know what's starting to happen in my mind right now is um, I'm starting to really like what I'm looking at because I love how these so-called orange, you know, orange colors are not very orange. So that's kind of fun and weird. You know what I mean? Um, oh, it's kind of beautiful, actually. Um, and I like that it's kind of trippy. So I, I wanted to do some color choices that would not get me sort of like a wah, wah. It's kind of a good orange. It's kind of a good purple. It's kind of a good green. I wanted something that was different. Okay, so who can tell me why we didn't really make a very good orange just now? And this is YouTube, so you can't tell me out loud, but you could probably put it in the comments. These look all the same. If it looks all the same to you, it's because it does look all the same. All right, let's get that a little bit redder. This is like the most, how shall I put this? Lackadaisical, um, this is not responsible color mixing. <laughs> I'm not really being a great teacher, so to speak right now. Um, but, oh, I'm having a good time. And this is how I want it to be for you too. Like, just don't sweat it, okay? That is my advice to you. Like, this is supposed to be um, educational, but it's also supposed to be not stressful and it's supposed to be fun, uh, at least in my opinion. So, um, all right. So back to this question, like why, why didn't all that turn orange? What happened here? Are you thinking about it? Are you writing about it in the comments? Okay, I'll tell you what I think. Um, when you look at this red, it seems like it could be a good a good candidate for a nice bright orange. Um, it it's a little pinky. It's true, but it's relatively bright. Like um, it's not like a purple, blue, 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 red. Do you know what I mean? Um, you might not, and you may actually be hitting pause now and stop forever and never come back here because it's like, what the heck is this video? <laughs> but if you're still here, um, uh, I will say that the real um, perpetrator of non-oranginess is this yellow ochre because it's... Um, it's not like a pure yellow, is it? It's like this earthy color. It's got um, an almost brown green quality. Um, and so if it's got a brown green quality, that means like we've got a little bit of red and a little bit of blue in this yellow, right? Brown is basically mixing all those together. So there's no way you're gonna get a good orange if you've got if you've got like blue getting in the way, right? This is just like a little greenish. 
Nobody said a greenish orange, you know? I don't know if there's any such thing as that. Wow, that's a cool color. Um, if I post this video, um, which I am going to post this video, like, I wonder if I'm going to lose subscribers. <laughs> oh, this is such a night. Can I tell you? This has been a night. But I'm still posting. You know why? Because I'm being consistent. Dang it. Um, all right. Oh, this is fun. This is fun. Like, come on, y'all. Look at this. This is a horrible purple. But it's awesome, too. It's like plum. But what I mean by it's a horrible purple is like, this isn't violet, right? Why isn't it violet? Because this blue is kind of green, which means it has a little bit of yellow in it. And so that's going to dull down your violet. This wound up being a lot more of an exciting trio than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. All right, let's make some green. Okay, look at it. All right, we've got sort of like a wah, wah, not really an orange, wah, wah, not really a purple. Do you think we'll get a green out of this? Have I managed to choose three colors that will not get you a pure, awesome color of, or, you know, like a, a pure, um, you know, platonic ideal of a secondary color? You know, anyway, we'll see what happens. I am really looking forward to seeing what happens when I add anthraquino blue to yellow ochre. What's gonna happen? <laughs> Wow, this is a muddy, muddy green. Why? Because even though this blue would lend itself to a wonderful green because it's got some greenishness in it already, what did we say about this? It's got a little bit of all of it. It's basically brown, right? So it's making everything brown. Love it. So, but even though it's making everything kind of brown, it's also making everything kind of beautiful. It's like, oh, this is a this is a different way to go, you know? This is like a very earthy color wheel, isn't it? Ooh, yeah, I like it. Okay, so, and P.S. This is not the kind of um, color wheel that I would naturally gravitate towards. Ooh, when you get more blue in there, look at that. That's actually like a forest green. Someday I'm going to have like really awesome lighting and a really awesome camera. And then these colors are just going to be very accurate to, well, at least closer to accurate to what I'm seeing here in quote real life. Okay. Final one. What's gonna happen? Well, we, we know what's gonna happen. It's gonna be just like a slightly greener brown. This is not suspenseful. Is that enough? Oh, these are so pretty. They really are. Like, I don't know why, but I think it has something to do with making a color wheel and watching the colors sort of like gradually turn into, you know, like be in gradient like this. It always just makes it look all the better. Okay, so this is my very imperfect color wheel. I'll try to bring it closer in and maybe that'll help. Let's see what happens. Okay, can you see? It's not very well executed and I'm not even gonna bother doing like the tints right now where you add white and then you add dark. So we're just not gonna worry about that. We're just experimenting with what happens when we put these colors together. Now, if I were in Studio Color Notebook land, I would be like, oh, look, I've got these leftover paints, a little bit leftover paints here. I'm just going to mess around. And so you know what? For the briefest amount of time, I am going to do just that. Look at that. Um, I don't know if you can really see, but this crazy quinacridone red is just glowing out through the ochre in this really interesting way. Like, quinacridone red is, to me, a very strange color. Like, what am I looking at? How can you be pinky and orangey at the same time? I don't understand. 
What a strange color. This is not the first color I reached for, I gotta say, which is why I chose it. <laughs> which is why it was the first color I reached for today. Um, let's see how it looks next to that. Well, that's fun. A little bit of complimentary-ish, color-ish. For that matter, we could complimentary colorize the ochre to this sort of, ooh, that's nice. I like that. Okay, well, I'm making olives or something. Okay, what should we do now? Put this over here. We're just complimentary coloring everything. Oh, that's nice. Hopefully, I am modeling for you the idea that you might want to remember to have fun when you're doing your color wheels. You know why? Because you're at the middle of this, you know? Like we have been taught for so long to be really diligent students or whatever. And sometimes, I don't know, when I was in college, sometimes I would skip class to read. You know, you gotta keep yourself as the main character in your learning, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's like, your teachers are awesome, but like, like if you weren't there to learn, like what's even happening, you know? You're like the most important person in the equation when it comes to learning. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, I have made a thing, and I'm going to put a date on it. This was my one of my studio color notebook entries for whatever day this is, August 21st, 2024. All right, so that's what I'm talking about. 8-21-24, oh, no, what was it again, Ross Sienna? I've been calling it ochre, haven't I? Anyway, they are in the same kind of family, aren't they? They're earth pigments. Anthroquinone red, blue, anthroquinone blue, and quinacridone red. Color wheel. Practice night. Okay, that was fun. So, that was fun. All right, let's do the second one. Um, I'm sure you are waiting with bated breath. What two color or what three colors have I chosen now? All right, here's what I decided to do for this. So just like the last one, I decided, okay, I'm going to do like another, I'm going to do an earth pigment with more organic, like chemically sort of pigment. So uh, red oxide is my red, which is basically also kind of a brown, but, um, but it's called red oxide, right? So let's do it. And then I have nickel azo yellow, and that's a wackadoodle little awesome pigment that is fun and mixes. And then... This is the wild thing. I decided to choose phthalo green blue shade as my quote blue. Um, why not? Let's see what happens. What do you think is gonna happen? Are we gonna have like any like pure secondary colors that are just like, oh, you're a show stopping version of that color. What do you think? Like, you think we're going to be able to mix a red from this? No, I don't think so either. How about a, how about a violet? Do you think we'll even get close to violet? Probably not. But how about those greens? Am I right? 
because if you've got that acid kind of yellow cool thing, oh my gosh, is this almost dry? Somebody's got to remember to close their paint tubes. I'm not pointing fingers, but her initials are Ann Livingston. Okay, that's fine. We'll make it work. We have water. Okay. So let's start at the top with Nicolazo Yellow. Just look at how the, the mass tone is so like mustardy. And then, whoa, so bright. Look at that. This is just the wildest color. So fun. Okay. And then we'll get our red. That is a quite lovely red, even though it's like basically brick red, you know? I'm so curious to know, like, what is it going to be when you mix together this color with um, phthalo green? What's it going to be? Let's find out really soon. All right. <laughs> That's bad. Okay, but look, because phthalo green has such a strong tinting strength, I, it just needed to give me a little bit of it. This is going to be so weird. <laughs> this combination is wild. Okay. All right, which one do you want to do first? Should we start over here? That's what you're going to say, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, just a touch. Okay, I just did a touch, but. Hmm, okay, well, I feel like there's a good intermediate here. Oh, that yellow is great. Um, that is so rich and beautiful. Okay. All right, we're heading into orange territory sort of stuff. Oh my gosh, Will. Aren't you attractive? That's so cool, okay. Um, just a little bit of that this time. This red oxide, look at how opaque it is. It's so great. I think that's why it's so strong is because it's opaque. Is that, am I saying something true? Probably. Beauty, all right, that's great. Okay, I really feel like I want to hold on to the greens till the end. Um, no, I want to hold on to this to the end. I want the suspense, the suspense of what's going to happen when those go together. Okay, all right, all right. So let's do some super vivid greens, shall we? Okay, a little bit of, oh my goodness. Yep, we saw that coming. That's almost too green. Phthalo green, you be so intense. Okay. It's like, I can't, okay, here's what I need to do. I need to back that up. So I'm gonna dip it in water. I'm gonna dab at it a little bit. Hope for the best. It's like way too green. Oh, look at that. Okay. Well, oh well, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I think I'm in the market for some new phthalo green. Wow, all right. Okay. Oh, okay, 
It's like I almost need to break this with the back of the. <laughs> I don't even know this is. <laughs> Sure, I'm glad I'm doing this all in one take. There's no turning back. <laughs> okay. Well. It's like these two very intense pigments. Nicolazo yellow and quinacridone, I mean, sorry, and thalo green. And um, basically, I feel like we could do like a whole... Um, like a really long, oops, did I, okay, hold on a second. I got a little red in there. All right, we could do like a whole long um, color wheel with this, you know? I mean, sorry, a long, um, gosh, what's the word? Um, color line, just like a gradient stretch out thing. Like, do you think I'm gonna delete this video later? <laughs> I came here to do what I said I was gonna do, but at what cost? Okay, we're gonna call that good enough even though it has issues. And the issues are too big of a jump there. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for, well, the moment that I've been waiting for, I can't speak for you. I just have to guess. I have to get some more of this stuff out of here. Do you think there's any usable paint in here at all? I don't think so. I think it's just this sad. <laughs> do I have any more phthalo green here? No, I do not. This is it. This is, this is what I got. I'm just gonna have to work with it. It's fine. Okay. I cannot imagine that this is fun to look at. <laughs> the grappling with the green. Oh, wow. What? Okay. All right, we're going to start on the red side of things. Oh, my. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Like, guess what? This is sort of, I can see how this could, this could lead us to something that's almost going to be like a violet. Um, this is really close to like a 1990s witchy lipstick. Beautiful. Wow. Didn't expect that. Oh my goodness. Okay, can I tell you something? It seems to be that no matter what I do, like when I do a color wheel with the least exciting colors, I still just get really excited. Why is that? Oh man, so pretty. If, if you are somebody who hates doing color wheels, will you tell me in the comments? And will you try doing a color wheel anyway with colors that you don't use usually and see if that's more fun? Especially because like if you see like how sloppy I'm doing this, like is that liberating at all for you? Okay. I'm just curious. So anyway, all right, here it is. I'm gonna bring it closer. Can you even see that? Oh, so sad. I don't think. Yeah, just come on over to Seattle and I'll show it to you. All right. Um, okay, so um, that's awesome. I could have done this with crayons, but I do have to admit that the mixing of paint has its own very special, special experience mixing experience you know it's hard it's hard to uh it's hard to replace paint for something like this
just gonna do my thing and then I'm gonna finish up so um, thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight in my sort of um, mildly unhinged state as I grapple with the fact that um, tonight did not go as planned at all I had a whole different whole different um, not lesson I guess yeah I guess kind of a whole different lesson that I was gonna do today but um, when I started planning it I realized it was too soon to um, start basically covering all of human history you know which is kind of where I was headed and I just thought you know what this is going to be off-putting not to say that what I'm doing right now isn't off-putting because I have a feeling that some people are now gone <laughs> uh, and that's okay <laughs> because um I don't know like this kind of this kind of uh randomness is not for everybody there's too much there's too much um I'm gonna cover some of this up there's too much of this color you know what I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this I'm gonna stop that how am I gonna stop it I guess I'll stop it by adding more <laughs> This was really fun. I, I hope that you had a good time. And I hope you've been painting this whole time too. Because otherwise, well, I mean, or maybe you really just enjoy watching somebody else do this. And then and if that case, I hope that I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, look, here's the deal. I will not have my feelings hurt if you leave me a comment <laughs> and you tell me what this was like for you. Even if it was bad. I want to know. Just tell me. I can take it. Um, <laughs> it's not like it's yeah. It will. I will learn something from it. You know, whatever you have to say. Just tell me. And in the meantime, oh, okay. Gosh, there's one more thing I have to say. Um, so next Wednesday. I hope that you will have been working in your studio color notebook and messing around with colors that are interesting to you. And then I hope that you come to um, your video watching experience with your sketchbook slash notebook and colors uh, because I think that will be useful to you next week. We got a lot of forest green going on right now. What? What? Did, how did that happen? I guess it's a combination of the azo yellow and this stuff. This is turning into kind of like a forest village. I gotta make sure I don't cover up any of this yellow because there's not much to be seen. I just keep adding more and more green now. Like, well, like this forest green. I think I might need to stop now. So I'm gonna get this off of here because it's just a clump of something and I'm not gonna be able to have that stay in the notebook. Just too thick. All right. All right, one last little moment of these two together. Right? Okay, can I get all of them together? Like a group photo, family photo. Let's see, where'd the other thing go? Here it is. All right, everybody, say cheese. Say, say green. All right, this is, hold on a second. Was that worth it? Probably not. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say goodbye real quick. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, bye. See you later. Thanks for watching.